Jared, what's up? Welcome back on Shore Dog. The one championship strawweight champion is here. How are you, friend? My friend. Good. How about you, man? I'm good. I'm good. You look in good shape and in good spirits. Oh yeah, I'm super excited for this grappling match, man. It's gonna be great. Ah uh, yeah, your upcoming appointment is on August fourth. You're taking on Mikey Muzumeci, uh for the one championship flyweight submission title. Before that, and of course, we'll discuss that in a while. How are you spending your uh, your summer? Oh, I've just been working out. I've been getting ready for fights, and now I'm getting ready for a submission grappling match, man. It's going to be super exciting. I get to go against the Michael Jordan of submission grappling. It's a great opportunity, and uh, thank you, One Championship, for giving me the opportunity. Have you done anything else in addition to training and preparing for your upcoming uh, challenge? Uh, I'm in Michigan, man. It's, it's all lakes over here. So I've just been hanging out at the lakes, hanging out with my friends. I'm over here at my coach's house and we have like five people over here. So there's not a dull moment. We should have a reality show over here. Oh, <laughs> one championship. Make it happen. Why not? <laughs> I loved your answer, man. I loved your answer. So since you're mostly competing in MMA and but I'm pretty sure you are training your grappling and your Brazilian jiu-jitsu on every occasion since it's a pivotal part of mixed martial arts. But allow me to ask, how do you prepare for a submission grappling match? I've had some of the best black belts in Michigan. Some are world champions and, and some are Pan Am world champions as well. And they've been helping me throughout these past years with my submission grappling. So to individualize it as a sport as itself, it's a lot easier to me personally than it would be mixed martial arts. A lot of people only have gotten to see me in my submission grappling with mixed martial arts in inward. So now I get to individualize it and there's no pressure on me, man. There's a lot of pressure on Mikey and the jiu-jitsu community. So I'm going to give it all I can and show everybody that submission grappling is super exciting. When Mikey was going against Usama, the last fight over in uh, Fight Night 10 in Denver, Colorado, I think I was the only person in the audience that was cheering. I was sitting there. I was like, I was like, man, this is absolutely crazy. You get to see Kate Rutulo, um, you get to see Mikey, you know, some of the best grapplers in the world go at it. I was, I was in the crowd. I was trying to pump everybody up. I was like, jujitsu, jujitsu. But, you know, it, some people think it's boring. And that's my job to show people that jujitsu and submission grappling is not a boring sport. I totally agree. They are not boring sports. And, but, you know, at the same time, they're very technical. And, of course, I can guess why people, you know, not when they don't see striking or they don't see punches involved, they might think, oh, my God. But as you mentioned, and uh, I agree that's not an hyperbole, uh, you are taking on the Michael Jordan of submission, of grappling, you know. So... How do you plan to stop him? How do you plan to defeat him? How do you plan to make him tap, if possible? Man, I'm super fast. I got more strength and I'm more athletic. And those are the three counterparts that I'm going to use to defeat Mikey Misumichi. Uh, I've trained with Mikey and his sister uh, like Ooh. five, six years ago over in Coconut Creek, Florida. So I know Mikey's game a lot. I know that he plays a lot of the K guard. I know that he uses his uh, um, Uma Platas to get into the K guard and get into legs. So I'm going to be going in very surgically into this match. And I, I know what Mikey is about. So at the end of the day, I'm going out there and I'm showing my balls to the whole world and showing that I, I as a mixed martial artist in my first submission grappling match, I can hang or beat the best of all time and that's what i'm looking forward to it's an opportunity the pressure's on him it isn't on me i'm going out there and i'm having fun i'm going to be as athletic as possible i'm going to be in his face constantly he's treating it like a match even though he calls it a fight but i'm the real fighter here and he's going to see that 
Have you worked on uh, defending uh, knee bars, leg locks, since apparently submission grappling nowadays is mainly working on the legs? <laughs> yeah, like I said, I work with a lot of black belts and a lot of world champions in no gi. Um, one of my main coaches, Alex Hody, he is a wizard with leg locks. He's the wizard all the way around with uh, with his jujitsu. And my coach, James Lee, if anybody doesn't know James, he is known, he was like one of the first submission grapplers in MMA, uh, besides Dean Lister, that was hitting heel hooks, that was hitting knee bars. And he is a professor underneath of it. So yes, defensively, I am prepared for Mike Kimisumichi. Would I have liked to get six months to go against Mike Kimisumichi? Of course. I mean, I think that I could I could beat him prominently with six months, but Three weeks, I'm going to work with what I got, and I'm going to show people that I am one of the best submission grapplers in the world in my first submission grappling match. What's always funny, you know, is seeing MMA fighters doing uh, gra submission grappling uh, fights or sub submission grappling uh, um, challenges. Let's put it, I, I don't know, I don't even know how to, to call them, but still, you know, submission grappling matches. And at the same time, not uh, throwing strikes. So uh, how is it? Is it strange for you not to, to work on just on your Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu without adding any any punches, without uh, adding any any strikes? Um, Predominantly, I am like working on Jiu-Jitsu constantly. I'm working on the individual martial art as itself, while a lot of gyms, they go into the mixed martial arts aspect and they try to just bunch it all up into one. I work on my boxing individually. I work on my jujitsu individually. I work on my wrestling individually. I work on my Muay Thai individually to where I'm well-versed. And it's perfect for me in one championship and the standards that they have with their champions that I can do these crossover fights and it's not going to be that hard for me. And, you know, now that we mentioned the mixed martial arts, uh, you're coming off in your latest assignment, you defeated Joshua Pesho. You captured the strawweight uh, championship. Um, right now, are there any plans to defend it uh, this year? Is there something on the horizon or not yet? Man, all comers, come on. Everybody's saying that I'm running from a match. I ain't running from nothing, bro. I'm wanting to fight every two months. The problem is I already beat everybody. They got to fight each other to come back to me. I I'm sitting there begging one championship. Come on, bro. Like, give me give me this fight. Give me this fight. Give me this fight. Give me this fight. They got this uh, Dagestani guy coming up, uh, Monzor. He's actually pretty good. I'm definitely willing to, to tussle with him. And I know that they're going to have an event in Qatar. So if they want to put me up against him or um, you have uh, Yama, Yamamichi, he's from Japan. I love Japan. Japan's definitely my second home in mixed martial arts. It helped me develop into the mixed martial artist that I am. So anybody that they want to put me up against, Demetrius Johnson, Adriana Moraes, it doesn't matter. I'm just here to fight. That's my job. And I sign a contract and you put me in there and I point my finger and let's go at the end of the day. I guess you're pretty satisfied with your performance uh, um, in December. Was there anything that not changed, but maybe you could have done better? Just you know, analyzing the details. Let's put it like this. Hundred percent, and it was it was mostly just my uh, my movement and with my striking. Uh, you know, I didn't know what Joshua Pascal felt like, and I didn't know what it what it felt like to go against the Wushu World Champion. So it, that's a completely different kind of stand-up style than I'm used to than in the Americans to where you have box, mostly boxers, mostly kickboxers, mo mostly Muay Thai guys. While those guys in the Philippines and Wushu, they, they turn their kicks over completely different. They turn their punches over completely different. They hit a bunch of spinning attacks. So it took me a while to analyze Joshua Pascal, but as you've seen in the third, fourth, and fifth that I was actually – tearing him up on the feet so the only thing I would take away from myself in that uh in that bout was just to be a, a little bit more less movement use my movement but use it uh correctly in order to uh knock my opponent out
Yeah, again, I just wanted to stress out that we're discussing about a unanimous decision victory for you, and we're just looking at tiny details. <laughs> yeah, I wanna, I wanna, I wanna finish. Period. I wanna finish everybody, and I wanna prove to everybody that I'm the best in the world. And sometimes when you don't finish people, people still have that question. So my job in this next bout and other bouts is to not leave any questions in the judges or the people's minds. Jared, I wish you best of luck with your upcoming uh, fight with Mike, Mikey Muzumeci. Hopefully, I will hear again from you in the future, man. Thank you so much, brother. Have a nice one. Thank you, Sammy. Have a nice one. Bye-bye.